In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find three viable Amazon FBA products in under 10 minutes. Hello everyone, it's Sajad, Stealth Amazon FBA. I hope you're doing well. So as promised, I'm gonna show you a quick way to find products. Now I'm gonna add something to that. I'm gonna show you how to find them if you have a very limited budget. Before that, you need product research software. And it's very important to get this software. In any business, you need to use tools to create efficiency in the process, streamline the process, save costs, calculating profit margins, all of that stuff. And I tend to now use Helium 10 for product research. Now, if you're interested in a discount, if you look below any of my videos, what you'll see in the description is a link to that discount. Click on the link. Then just scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on the get started today. And that's where you can actually enter my coupon code. So if you want 50% off your first month with Helium 10, uh, type Sajad 50, click apply and then you get a 50% discount on the price. For example, the Platinum uh, plan, which includes a lot of other useful tools as well, which you'll need further down the road. For example, when it comes to listing your products, actually following up your customers with email follow-up to request reviews, etc. So if you click on the left and you click on black box here, what you'll see here in the first tab, it's products. And what you can do, I'm gonna use the example of amazon.co.uk because I sell here primarily in the UK, is you can select a minimum revenue. So let's say you've got a limited budget, so you're only going after products that do a minimum of 2,000 pounds in revenue. Then you can click on search. But the problem here, it's got 200 plus products. Very likely there's probably five, 600,000 products that meet this criteria. We've not added any filters. I'm gonna show you a faster way to do it by using a more targeted approach. Now the risk with this is if you use these specific filters, other people could be finding the same products. And that is a common complaint people have here online or on YouTube. But all I would say to that is yes, that is true, but you need to get on with it. And you need to realize that even if you use these filters this week, if you did the same next week, you could find a completely different list of products because stuff on Amazon is changing all the time. I'm gonna be adding, for example, a maximum review count. Now, if I add a maximum count, very likely a lot of these products, they could have gone over that count next week. So they won't actually be included in this search. I hope that makes sense. And the other thing is in any niche, there's always new developments in products, new improvements. For example, think of a mobile phone and how those have improved over the years. So you can't say that because there's a few sellers there already and they've got hundreds of reviews, you can't compete because that's not true at all as I'm about to show you. So the way I would do it is put the minimum revenue as 2,000 if you've got a limited budget. But then the price point, that's important. I would wanna put a minimum of nine and a maximum of 19. Few reasons for that. Any less than nine, then the FBA fees, possible sponsored ad fees, it really cuts into your margins. Anything over 19 pounds and you won't be able to even afford to launch the product if you've got a very limited budget. And the reason I use 919 rather than 1020 is because most people when they're doing this, they're using those round numbers to kind of help avoid that situation where other people are finding the same products. And review count, I'd put maximum of nine because I'm interested in those new niches where you can quickly launch a product as a new seller and start making sales immediately. And what I would do there then is leave review rating completely blank. Shipping size tier, now there's two ways you can do this. I would advise if you're brand new, limited budget, you have to go with light products because it's a lot cheaper when it comes to FBA fee and you can sell the products faster, get your money back faster and it will help with cash flow in terms of developing and growing your Amazon business. So one way to do it is you can click on shipping size tier and click on small oversized, small letter, large letter, small envelope, standard and standard parcel and leave the rest. That's one way you could do it. So let's do that. And then on advanced filters, what I want to do, in fact, before I show you that, let me just do a quick search based on these uh, criteria alone. And what you see here is again, 200 plus products. But what's really cool with Helium 10, it gives you a summary. So now this is the screening part of the process. We're quickly looking through what's the category, who's selling the product, and also I'm looking at variation count because I don't wanna see a product that does 2,000 in revenue, but it has seven, eight different colors. As a new seller with a limited budget, you cannot afford to stock all of those different variations, nor do you know which colors, which sizes are doing better. You wanna uh, launch a product that has one variation, one option only at the beginning. You can then build up from there. The other thing I glance at is the weight, because obviously you want it to be light. We've set that up as a filter anyway, and you can have a quick glance at age. So how long have they been selling that product listing for? Now, you can ignore last year's sales, sales year over year, because a lot of these products with this particular uh, search filter criteria is going to be generally brand new products. 
And obviously here you can glance at uh, price, monthly sales, etc., which I won't worry too much about. Now, if you go up here, this is the other issue. If you look at number of sellers, you can see here four for this product. You don't want to compete with Amazon anyway, but you don't want to do an arbitrage product. What do I mean by that? So if you click on this arrow, you'll see uh, very likely this is a well-known branded product. And you can see that here. So many different sellers are offering this. So it's not a, a product you can private label yourself. We don't want that. So what I would do is go into advanced filters and then set maximum number of sellers as two. The reason I don't do one is sometimes with an FBA listing, the seller might be doing an FBM option as well. So they're happy to send to their customer from their home stock, but also send some of the stock to the Amazon Fulfillment Center. If you're not sure about that or you have any questions on retail arbitrage, please mention them in the comment section below. Still, to this day, arbitrage is a great way to make a quick flip on Amazon, but you only need to buy 10 units or 20 units, but it is getting a little bit more difficult with a lot of these brands now making agreements with Amazon regards to who can and who cannot sell their own product. The other thing I would add here is the variation count because I don't want there to be lots and lots of different colors. So I just want one as the maximum, shall we say. And you can include weight here, but we've already kind of selected that with the shipping tiers. And I would leave everything else blank here. Now, the other thing I want to do is select a category. But before I do that, let me just click on search to give you an idea. So you can see here that there's a lot less products now, 153. Now, if I wanted to, I can click on category here and select categories that I have experience in, A, for example, or B, I'm interested in, or C, uh, ones that I know are safe to sell as a new seller. Like, for example, a lot of the time, even things like toys and games, you might not be able to sell straight away as a new seller. Some of these definitely you will need extra approval for in the UK, for example, beauty. So you stay away from those. Baby products, you might need extra certification, extra experience, stay away from that. Ma mainly you'd wanna go after DIY, electronics, garden outdoor, health personal care, home garden, uh, home and kitchen. What else do we have here? Pet supplies is fine. Sports and outdoors, stationery, office supplies. Those tend to be safer niches in general, but you still have to do the full appraisal process. This is only a video where I show you how to come up with new ideas. So let's have a look at the 153 very quickly. I'm gonna glance through these, have a quick screen of uh, the, these kind of data points and see if there's any potential here. I wanna stay away from clothing as well, because again, unless you have experience in clothing manufacturing, I wouldn't go anywhere near that as a new seller. Now you can see one here, it says scraping massage tool. So let's click on that one. Seems light enough, there's no variations. Price point a bit on the low side, revenue is good. Let's click on that. And you can see here, decent enough product, looks very simple, could be customizable. You could change the style, the colors, what comes in the set, you could bundle potentially. And I want to click on who's selling. And you can see here, the seller is called Hope Sing, and it's a Chinese seller. Now that's a good sign. That means very likely, not 100%, you still need to check for trademarks, etc. But very likely you can private label this product and you can launch it and sell it and put your own logo own branding on it. And very likely a lot of sellers have done that for this type of product. So that's one I would definitely go after. Now, if you want more information about the product appraisal process, how I actually identify whether the product's safe to sell, then just comment below. Also, I have a comprehensive mentorship program. It's the first link in the description below if you're interested. In that program, I actually go through a lot of different things you need to look out for. For example, for this, I would need to look out for trademarks, obviously. I need to look out for seasonality. I need to look out for any red flags. Do you need any extra approval or certification for this product? Also, I need to look out for the profit margins. How do you actually calculate those? I go through all of this in my extensive mentorship program. So let's get back onto the screening and let's move down. The other thing I would stay away from is anything related to supplements. Because again, if you don't have experience in that area, you're taking a bit of a risk if you don't know how these types of products are actually manufactured. Stay with something safe like the one I've just shown you. Another one just caught my eye because we're doing some tiling in one of our houses at the moment. This is tile spaces. So let's just click on this one. No problems with variation, um, newish listing. Again, it's only been selling for one month. Only got uh, a couple of reviews already doing 2000. Now, remember, you have to be careful with this with everything opening up, for example, in the UK. One thing you have to watch out for is seasonal products or products that are in demand right now, but for a short period of time. Again, I would prefer to just check the uh, seller as well. And you can see it's Chinese seller, very likely, very easy to private label. It looks like quite a generic product. What you're doing is you're basically, uh, basically adding your packaging and branding to it. Now, by the way, again, this is a common misconception. The first time you order stock, you do not need to go overboard branding your product. 
to be honest, a lot of the times I've launched this same generic product and I've just asked the manufacturer to send me their generic branding and I've just got it on Amazon, got it selling, sold 100, 200 units, made that cash back, and then I've started to do some fancy branding on the product. Because I like to test the market first as well because there's no 100% guarantee it's gonna sell really well. A lot of the time it will sell, the numbers are clear here. If you order this product, very likely you're gonna sell the product. But will it be extremely high sales where literally you're fighting uh, every single day in terms of keeping the product in stock? Or is it gonna be a slow grind where you need a lot of sponsored advertising? Now, although what people might say they know beforehand on YouTube, I'm here to tell you, honestly, you don't know for 100% very likely you're gonna to have to test the market, things are going really well, then you know you're onto a winner. And then you have to move fast in terms of cash flow. And that's why a light product like this is useful because you can get it back in stock a lot faster, literally within days if you're using the generic version. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent there, but basically, uh, all in all, this could potentially be a good product. The other tool I would use is I'd click on the Helium 10 Chrome extension and click on X-Ray. Because sometimes what you can do there is you can have a look at the kind of sales graph as well. So if you click on that here, what you can see is, let me just uh, move out the way there. So you can see it's, uh, click on all time. It's only recently started selling. Uh, had a bit of stock in March, probably sold out too quick. They were testing the market. They were probably out of stock for a while. But you notice there, they were out of stock for long. Because again, light product, easy to kind of uh, ship, um, easy to produce and mass manufacture. And you can see there, uh, the trend is very, very good at the moment. Obviously, we've not got the recent trend because it's too recent, really. So you'd have to look at this again over a week or two if you want to, but generally the signs are very, very good. So let's get back to the niche. So the next steps would be to actually analyze this niche, uh, niche in a lot more depth. What is it, a tile cross spacer? So what you'd wanna do is go onto the main search rather than category search, and tile spacer um, cross or something like that. And then you can have a look through the entire niche in detail. But remember, you're catching a good trend here because everybody's doing home improvements at the moment. And very likely you can see here ranking very high are some products here with no reviews. That's a very good sign. And also I would add further, if you're brand new, this price point is quite low. Some of these listings are $8.99, $9.99, but it means the rule of thirds, if the product's selling for nine pounds, very likely it costs three pound or less to actually source. That's including shipping door to door, all the taxes. So to order a hundred units of this product and sell it, how much do you need? If it's costing you three pound per product, a lot of you will be able to work that out as 300 pounds. That is all, possibly even 200 pounds. So it's a complete myth that you need thousands and thousands of pounds to launch a product. Yes, you're not gonna be able to quit your job by selling a few tile spaces, but you can get the ball rolling in terms of making an income, learn the process, get the requisite experience, and then you can launch more products. Now, if one of these products is suddenly selling a thousand units a month, well then, literally that one product, even if it's just a tile spacer, that could be making you enough revenue to replace your income. Now, I wouldn't rush and do that. Again, we're going off on a tangent here, but you see my point. Let's get back to the screening. I would literally do that now and go through all of these products. And remember, by next week, these products could have changed. Here's another one. Let's have a look at this one. So car humidifier. Um, again, a little bit heavy and stuff, but still portable. So the niche here might be car humidifier in general. And again, I'll just have a quick look to see who's selling the product. Very likely it's Chinese seller. Yep, Chinese seller. So it's another one that's very likely you can get the generic version and then you can brand it yourself by adding your own name on the bottom or something like that. Again, you need to look into the niche in a lot more depth, do all of those, uh, that normal appraisal process in terms of watching out for issues, for example, regards to seasonality, um, regards to any other red flags, but then you can crack on. And what you would do then in black box is do the same thing. Now, if you don't have a limited budget, you've already sold products on Amazon, you don't need to do all of this over filtering at the top. However, it does help because I still hear a lot of the time people complaining, I can't find a product to sell on Amazon. Within literally seconds, I found two that are very, very viable. And the good thing about the ones I've shown you is they're also customizable. For example, the tile spaces, how many different varieties can you have? Remember when you, uh, well, uh, if you guys have experience of this, any of you watching, when it comes to tiles and the grout, 
Um, you can either have the tiles fit very close or you can have them wider. So the spacing can change. The uh, type of plastic used can change in terms of quality. The quantity you have in a bag, the color that you're offering, you could offer it with, the, with some other tiling tools in the same bundle. Many, many things you could do with this product. You can get creative, but you don't need to guess either. You can actually look through the niche and see what's doing well. So what I would do here in this niche is click on X-ray and quickly scroll through. And what I wanna look for here is what is actually doing well in, compared to number of reviews. So if I have a look through here, um, I can see the revenue figures. I can see some of them, tire leveling systems, 29,000 in revenue, which is crazy. But what I wanna see is anybody tried bundling? You can see that there are some bundling kits here. So you're not guessing here, you're using the data, you're using the sales graphs, you're looking at the trends, and then you're making kind of informed decisions from there, if that makes sense. So I'll leave it there because it's just it's supposed to be a very, very short video. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like the video if you're enjoying the content, subscribe, turn on the bell icon, and that way you'll get alerted. I often do giveaways on this channel as well, whether it be regards to product software or also my mentorship program as well. So click the bell icon so that you can stay tuned for that. And if you'd like me to cover any other topics that you're struggling with when it comes to selling on Amazon or setting up any business in general, please comment below and I'll do a separate video on it. Thanks very much for listening.